We're going to turn our attention now to looking at something that we touched on before when we had our definition of what a definite integral was. But that is the fact that you can use integrals to represent net change in quantities. If you have the rate of change of some quantity, and you look at the definite integral of that from one boundary to another, that was going to represent the net change in that quantity. Simplest example of this is using velocity and position. The integral, say, from 2 seconds to 5 seconds of some velocity function, or in other words, the integral of the rate of change of position is going to be equal to the net change in position. Net change in position. Or in other words, the displacement. All right, so we're going to look at one specific example of that here using uh, this velocity function. So it's some particle that's moving along an axis. Uh, to create a graph of that, we'll use technology. We'll start by using the graphing calculator, and then we can use a computer software after. All right, so I've got this function already entered in here. You've got to use y and x on the calculator here. x squared minus 8 over x plus 1 all squared. I've got the window set up to match this uh, box over here. And we'll see what the graph looks like. It starts out negative. The velocity starts out negative, and then it the particle stops and then uh, becomes positive here. So we'll draw that in. It looks something like this. Really rough sketch of it there. If you're trying to describe what this particle does, uh, for this first part here, uh, up to this point, the particle's moving backwards. It's moving in that direction. And then after that, it starts moving the other direction and presumably gets farther than that eventually, right? Now, we're going to look at two things here. We're going to look at the net distance the particle travels. So that's looking at the difference between where it started and uh, where it ends here. So that's this. This is the net distance traveled right there. But we're also going to look at the total distance traveled. The total distance that the particle travels. That's looking at all of this distance and adding that up. It obviously travels farther than the, the net difference. The yellow is the displacement, the particle's displacement. What's the difference between where it started and where it ended? Whereas the blue is how much distance did it cover in total even though it backtracked. It went one way then it went the other way. The net, net distance it travels, we're going to use an integral for that. In other words, this is the displacement from 0 to 5. This is going to be the integral from 0 to 5 of that velocity function. Now, you could do this, obviously, a couple different ways. You could do this analytically by taking the function and algebraically you know, evaluating this integral. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to use the calculator to figure this out because the focus is on setting up the integral for each part here and what it means. Right, so we'll use the calculator for this to start with. There's our graph. To do that integral and show it on the graph, you can use the calculate feature here. This, down at the bottom on this TID4. If you hit that, it asks you for a lower limit. asks you for an upper limit. We'll do 0 to 5, and then it actually shows the shading on there. and tells you the value of it, that it's 35. That area, that net area. The net area there is 35. Now this is 35 centimeters because those are what our units were. So that's the net distance travel. It covers 35. That's the difference between where it started and ended. That is, you have, now I'll, I'll shade it in on the picture here. This area down on the bottom here, that's negative. That's its backwards progress. And I'll shade in all this bigger positive progress here. All right, and this 35 is the net difference between that. Some of this will cancel out with some of that. That's some of this canceling out when it goes backwards and then comes back forward. Now, if you want the total distance it travels, we don't want this to cancel out with part of this. We want it all to be positive. Now, you could do this one uh, analytically as well. If you went and found this point, you could find this integral, and then you could look at, let's say if that was point C, you could say, well, I'm going to find that integral from 0 to C, and I know that the value is going to come out to be negative, 
So what I could do is put a negative in front of it, and then I could add it on to the other integral from c up to 5, and presumably that would uh, that would come up because this, putting a negative in front of it makes it positive again. But I don't want to mess around with that here because that is a lot of fiddling around. What I'm going to do instead is do it all in one, one shot here by using the absolute value of that function. If I do the absolute value of that function, it's going to draw that part up there. And I'm going to have this area is going to be positive in here. So I'll move down here. And for this, I'm actually going to use GeoGebra. So there's that same graph, right? Roughly the same dimensions. On GeoGebra, you can use v of t actually as a velocity function there. Use those two variables. If you want to show the integral on here, uh, we'll first show the integral of just the function the way it is. Confirm what we had before here. You just say integral v 0, 5. And that should give us that same area, that 35, which it does. And we'll turn that off for a second. And uh, what we're going to do now is change this so we have the absolute value of that. You just put ABS, most calculators or things like that. If we do that, it is going to take a minute here. But it's going to flip this part up above here. All right, so we'll ignore the part that's in the negative. But you have both parts uh, above the axis there, and it actually shows now that area is all positive and it's 42.59 roughly. All right, so that's the that's the total distance it travels, treating that first part as a positive. So if we go back to here, for this one, this total distance traveled. Total distance was the integral from 0 to 5 of absolute value of v of t, All right, which is roughly 42.59 centimeters here. All right, that was that total distance traveled the backwards and the forwards. Okay, if you go back to our little diagram there of the motion, that's all of that blue, treating it all as positive. Basically taking this and putting it right here and then looking at what is that total distance there. All right, so that's the difference in how you can use integrals, net distance and total distance with velocity functions. All right.